We're back on Big Board Sports. Roger Weiland with you. It is a Wednesday morning, and every Wednesday at this time, we bring on the U Albany head football coach, Greg Catuso, uh, to our studios. Greg, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning, Roger. How are you? I'm good. Hanging out with my buddy, Zach By. He's running the show now, Coach. Zach's the best. He's running the show. Awesome. I'm happy. And Thanks, uh, Coach. you know my, my philosophy on producers. You have, if, to, you have to pay him. But... Well, you have to pay him. But if anything <laughs> goes wrong with the show, I mean, I've, maybe you work this way with your assistant coaches, but like with producers, anything that goes wrong with the show, I just blame the producer. Yeah, that's, if that's they don't like it, I, I'm a cop out. I, hey, <laughs> if Zach, he's producing the show. It's that's, his fault. That's how it works, right, Zach? Hopefully that's uh, not too much of an issue here <laughs> moving forward. Uh, congrats on the uh, start with Buffalo. Why not? It uh, it's, uh, was a huge win. I don't think anybody, I didn't, I don't think Zach did. A lot of people didn't think. You were going to go to Buffalo, maybe you play well and have a good game and feel good coming out, but to actually go outright and win the game, I think surprised a lot of fans. Yeah, I think, you know, the big thing we're trying to build is a, a program where we can, we're going to play our best every week. And, and you know, last year we went up there and we didn't play our best. You know, we, we were all over the place. We dumb penalties, putting the ball on the ground, things that were not who we were. And it, it carried over, you know, into the season. So, you know, our focus was us and, and going out and playing the best football game we could play, and, and we did. And, next, you know, our, our philosophy doesn't change is to, to get the game in the fourth quarter with a chance to win, and um, we did, and uh, we were able to win. I mean, you got the offense, people don't realize, but they went 81 yards against a pretty good defense um, to score the game-winning no touchdown. No doubt, no doubt, and, uh, and I thought Nevin managed the game really well, a sophomore quarterback that didn't have a whole lot of starts under his belt. When did this team, did, is there a certain, like, maybe halftime when you, when you uh, had really a good first half, when this team, you could look in their eyes and, and get a feel that this team now believes we go out and win this game. Now, not just play well, hang in there. We can win this football game. Yeah, I, I thought they came out that way. I, I you know, I was um, happy with, you know, our, our whole demeanor, you know, in preparation and a way we practiced when, you know, I, you know, I'd be lying if I said I thought we would go up there and definitely win. I, right. You know, I don't think that any game, to be honest. I go in hoping we play our best. And, um, but the energy in the sidelines from every kid, uh, the, the energy on the football field, they, they, they believe they could win the game, you know, and I, I give them a lot of credit for it because I don't think there was a turning point in the game. I think they went out from the get-go and, and uh, you know, and, and the Castro making a big play certainly fed right into it. But yeah, to start the it game. It did take him, well, you know, and I was watching him real closely because, you know, he had a pretty serious injury on that particular field. And um, I was curious how he would react to that. But three plays later, he's running yeah. down the football field with the ball. It was a great story because I would, when I was coming into the stadium, I ran into his dad. And I stopped and talked to his dad, and I, and I could just see in his dad's eye, like, oh, I just want to get through this game. Because as a father, you're thinking, a year ago on this field, it ended my kid's season. Here we go again. But then it was the first pass play of the football game. He comes up with the interception. That leads to a touchdown and puts you guys up 7 nothing. Yeah, I mean, he, he baited the quarterback. You know, he, he was showing blitz, and he's just that's just what he is. He's just a dynamite football player. He's got great instincts, and he, he baited him. And he, and he got the pick, and he was smart covering the ball up. I mean, all the things – you know that he did he does well instinctively um on that play which was great and um i thought that was certainly um a big part of the football game but you know you score first we scored first the yeah, year before right. the, the kids were ready to play and they you know i was impressed on defensively with the way we competed for the football you know i, I we contested every pass you know i talked to the team about it just tuesday again I said, if we can play that kind of football, that's who we are. And when we play like that, we, we, we're pretty competitive, And uh, no matter who the opponent is. And we, I started calling the opponent them, that them university. We don't even pay attention to them. I, I mean it. We, I, I fully believe this with all my heart is, is take care of business with ourselves. And every coach has their, you know, I, 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 there's all these traditions, and, and you read all this stuff all these coaches do. But to me, it's just good old-fashioned work hard football, and that's what we're trying to be. Coach, uh Zach by hanging out here in studio with Roger. Uh, Coach, is there any concern on any front from your end as a head coach after such a big historic win like that as far as an emotional hangover, as far as, you know, maybe getting caught up in the hype that surrounds a, a win like that over a, 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 a FBS program? There, You know, with the schedule we're playing, every single game is a, a, a hard game. And, and, and we've been building – we we we've been building a football team and trying to build a, a mentality and a culture. I've talked a lot about culture, that they understand the process to win a game. I don't know how they'll respond. I hope they don't because, honestly, um, it's not a big deal to me right now. It's not 
I know the significance of the win, but I also understand what needs done. We start, I started immediately when I spoke to the kids on the field after the game. I, I talked to them about Rhode Island, and I told them, you know, this, that game has more meaning yeah. if we build off of it than if we, you know, we go up there and lay an egg at Rhode Island. Look, Rhode Island's a pretty good football team. They're talented. If we go up there and they beat us and it's a good game and we play our best, then so be it. But if we go up there and think we're someone special because we beat Buffalo, then yeah. – that's that's what I don't expect from our culture and who we are. So you know, we're, I like where we're at right now. I mean, these kids, you know, the coaching staff. I, you know, I I came in. I couldn't. You know, I got home at five in the morning and I went to bed and I woke up at eight thirty. And um, I decided to grab breakfast with the wife and I went to work. The coaches weren't supposed to be in until noon, and every single coach was already in. So I, I, the kids have that is who that's the mentality of our staff and hopefully that's the mentality we're building with our players kind with greg gattuso and we'll do it every uh, every wednesday morning greg joins us uh here in studio rhode island coming up on saturday but this win had to be big for the program when you talk about a program win and then you got to move forward to rhode island but you beat for the first time an, an fbs school you do it on the road and from a fan base standpoint trying to put more fans in the seats when the regular when the first game comes around in two weeks that has to help yeah, I you know I because yeah, it's an intention grabber. Like I ran into people that go, "You want to be Buffalo?" Uh, yeah, yeah, they did. You know, and, and some people were a little, "Whoa, that's that's pretty good." Yeah, there's. I've always said this, and everywhere I've been, and I've been built. I've mm-hmm. built programs over the years, and there's always a signature win, and we've lacked a signature win. Yeah. There's no doubt. I mean, we beat Delaware last year was a nice win, but they weren't a great team. Um, we needed a, a win like that, and, and everywhere I've been, when you see a program turn the corner. You know, like I said, there's going to be ups and downs because we're still young, but it's a signature win. And I think, uh, one, it, it'll rally the alumni. They were fired up about it, you know, for to, to beat a team like that. I think locally, at least, you know, I've been preaching we're on track and we're ahead of schedule, and I believe that. And I think that game kind of says, hey, maybe they are. And, and if the fans rally around this football team, that's a big part of great programs is fan base. You know, when people come out to games um, – it rallies the home team, you know. It 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 generates um, income. It it generates interest in the newspaper, who mm-hmm. then generates interest in um, putting things in the in the newspaper, which helps us in recruiting. I mean, it's just a, a the trickle down effect from a signature win is huge, and and uh, I'm just hoping we build off it because I think we have a chance to have a good year. All right, Rhode Island comes up. Uh, they were what blown out by Kansas, Kansas, yeah. Kansas. Kansas uh, what what is the scouting report on Rhode Island, and what kind of matchup in, in your first CAA game of the year on Saturday at one o'clock? Well, you know, I I've talked to my team about their their football coach Jim Fleming. I've known him for years. I coached against him um, many many moons ago, and and he's he's been a, a BCS level coordinator. He's a good football coach, and I told the players he's on that plane on the way home talking to his team about this is the game we got to win. We always knew this, and it's exactly what he's telling them. Um, so they're, that's what I told my team last year after we lost to Buffalo badly. Um, he, they will respond. They're young, um, but they have a quarterback that's very dynamic with ball in his hands. He runs. He's a little bit short, but he can really run. Um, he's got a stable young receivers that I think are pretty good. They have two good running backs and a big offensive line on offense. They moved the ball. They had 170 yards rushing against Kansas, which is impressive. Wow, yeah. Um, defensively they they've lost a couple key players but they're athletic they have a defensive lineman that i think is probably one or top or second best in the league he's disruptive number 91 he's outstanding um so you know we're gonna have our hands full and we need our offensive line i think you know one of the things saturday i i I, or friday night that i thought helped was our offensive line for really the first time really really um stepped up i mean they've been really solid but i thought they were really great on friday night they their defensive line did not touch our quarterback, which is an amazing thing to me because they were pretty good up front. So yeah. we need that kind of effort out of our front this week to try to take over this game. So it'll be a, it's going to be a tough game. It's a conference game. When you play a conference game early, boy, it's it's a very, very critical part of your season. Well, good luck at uh, Rhode Island. Zach and I will have the call on, on Rewind 105.7 and then the rest of the games uh, right here on your new home for uh, you Albany football and basketball, 104.5, the team. But congrats on the win, Greg. I hope you had a, a little bit of a chance to enjoy it. I, I A little bit. A little know, bit. And, uh, Good game went one. Went Lake so Local and enjoyed it a little bit afterwards. But, uh, you know, my coaches told me that there was a lot of commotion in the broadcast booth at the end of that game. There, it was, <laughs> you know, I, you know, I, it just, was, that was good. good. Yeah, it no, was all good. good. It's, it's hard not to get fired up when you get a win no, like it was that good. on the it road. Was, it was special. It's a, it's something we need to build off of and, and uh, 
you know, it's. Uh, I'm, I was a little mad about the Gatorade shower, but uh, <laughs> I, I told him I'll give him a pass. Yeah. You know, um, for that. But we total don't, free pass on yeah, that. Yeah. Let's win the conference before we <laughs> soak me in Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, I'll talk to you next week. Right, That's great, Catuso. Every Wednesday here in studios.